it is Tuesday morning, June 21st, and the garden is looking lovely. I think it's 6.30 in the morning, which is usually my prime time to get up, but it means I always have bags under my eyes. So if you'll excuse those, I'll show you what's going on in the garden. I have an anxious dog at the moment. It's okay. Um, lots of growth happening. It's so exciting. Um, I feel like there's been like a chunk of time between uh, the last videos that I posted and what this content will be just because there's been so much growth. <laughs> I've been busy out here weeding and even doing some harvesting already and just wasn't able to pull the camera out while I did it. Um, so I'm really excited to show you what's going on. And I did a little bit yesterday on um, the cabbages and the lettuces and all of that. I mean, this garden is so full. It looks amazing. Um, but I have to show you, show you from this vantage point just how pretty it looks. This is kind of like my, my dream garden in a way, the way that this garden looks and has come together, which is not at all what I expected. <laughs> so, so that is really exciting, especially once these sweet potatoes start coming in and growing up the vines and these sunflowers, which are over here on the right, which are already huge, start blooming. Ugh, it's just going to be glorious. taken off to my expectations in this garden are these peppers. And I'm not entirely sure why because I gave them a really nice dose of um, blood meal and um, bone meal before I planted them. But I will say they did get stunted and I've mentioned this in another video. They did get stunted um, with one cold night that we had and that may be why because some of these are totally recovering. They had no leaves at all and they've come back. So I I say that, but at the same time, I know why why they are a little slower to go. And in fact, there is, I just saw it. Where did it go? I just saw a little baby bell pepper right there. <laughs> so there is growth, just slower than I wanted. But I know that they'll come in and do their thing, especially if I continue to give them some uh, nitrogen-heavy foods. Uh, but everything else is really just looking amazing and my flowers are starting to bloom which is so exciting is the glory of the colors coming in um these are about to bloom as well and then i have the sweet potato vines along this side that will quickly grow and cover this whole fence with some really pretty color so this garden is really just looking amazing Behind me here is the East Garden that was looking pretty bare in most of my other videos, but has also really started to come in, especially all these squash behind me, which is so fun. Uh, the pumpkin vines are huge already, which is not surprising because they're bigger pumpkins, so they're gonna have bigger vines. But my summer squash back here, which I'll show you in a minute, is looking really beautiful. And you know, I always hate to say that because let me grab my coffee. The stupid squash bugs inevitably come and like ruin all your hopes and dreams of squash. <laughs> so since this is the first year that I know of that squash has been planted here, maybe I'll have a little bit better luck, but I just got to keep my eye open for those guys because uh, this is so glorious and I don't want to lose it to those things. Isn't that amazing? So pretty. I love squash plants. They're just big heart-shaped leaves. And then you have some that have this really pretty variegation on them, which just makes them even be more beautiful against all these green. I planted almost solely uh, patty pan squash this year because that is my favorite. I just am not a fan of golden squash, summer squash. It's just too mealy for me. Um, I do love zucchini, especially when it's um, pan fried. That's the way I grew up with it. I do love it like that. And I feel like it's got a little more meaty bite to it. But patty pan squash has been 
like my ultimate fave since it was since I started growing it because it's, it's got more of a bite to it and it doesn't like dissolve in the pan when you cook it. Um, and so I have decided that that is pretty much what I'm going to make to grow is all different kinds of patty pan squash. So I think I have at least five different varieties out here. And then um, the one zucchini that I did grow is this Italian, uh, I wanna say Romanesca zucchini. I'm gonna have to look, but it's known for its squash blossoms. And if you've watched any of my videos in the past, you know I love cooking with squash blossoms. And a, a big part of that is because I lived in Italy for three years and my landlord, Titi, always made squash blossoms and she would stuff them with fresh ricotta cheese and then she would um, batter them and just lightly saute them. And it was the most glorious thing ever. And so I taught, I learned how to make them and it's become one of my kids' favorite things. So I specifically bought this zucchini plant because they have huge squash blossoms. And so far it has not disappointed. Um, I saw two of them out here the other day and they were enormous. And now I have two beautiful zucchinis growing down here that I want to show you. Here are some squash blossoms right now. And I don't know if you're gonna be able to tell just how big these are, but when they open up, they're as big as my hand and I have very long fingers. Um, so we are excited to pull some of these today and make some fried squash blossoms. So this is, this is he. I think I planted four of these because I wanted to make sure that I had plenty of squash blossoms to cook with. And it's already just has these enormous, look at this. I mean, this happened in like a week's time. Look how big that leaf is. But down here amongst the green, you will see these beautiful zucchinis. And the other thing that's really pretty about these is they are like a lighter green and they have these kind of like creamy white stripes to them. Um, but you can see, just how big this blossom was when it was open. And I've got lots of baby zucchini in there. So I can't wait for that to open up. And another one right in here that you can really see how pretty that is. And this is almost as long as my hand and I have long hands. So I'm trying to decide if I'm going to give it another day to grow um, or if I'm gonna pluck it today and just go for it. So. That's my decision I have to make, but it is very exciting to see that I have squash already. And all of these sweet potatoes are doing really good, which is great because these were also all stunted by that one cold night that we had. In fact, I thought I had lost almost this entire bed, but they have all come back. And you can see just how pretty these leaves are, I love sweet potato vines just for their, their beauty. Um, but they are going to take off here soon. And this bed will be full, <laughs> full, full of vines. Now, interestingly enough, my, my spicy pepper plants have done much better than my sweet pepper plants. And they weren't as affected by the cold, that cold night we have. I have no idea why. I just, I have no idea. I don't know the science behind that but they are looking really nice. And I've already had some peppers like fall off, ready to eat. And there's several um, over here. I think these are my jalapenos that are coming in. Let's see, I lost a lot of my, a lot of my tags. So it's gonna be a, a guessing game as to what, what we've got here. But let me show you what they're looking like. So this is sort of a, a small herb garden. You can see how pretty the dill is looking. I've got some zinnias and some lavender, and I feel like there's some other flower that I planted in here over here with some parsley and oregano. This is a weed that should not be in here. Some, whoops, let's pull my parsley. Parsley, oregano, holy basil, other kinds of basil. Um, so that's fun, those are looking good. And then back here, I finally got my fence up for these um, harvest acorn squash. I've got five acorn plants back here, squash plants, and I gave them something to, I'm gonna try to trellis them up on so that they don't take over my pepper garden here um, and they can grow out into the onion bed if they want. So I'm a, it's a sort of an experiment. I haven't done this before but I'm gonna see if I can trellis them up and get them to grow up and over instead of this way into my pepper garden. 
Uh, hindsight, I probably shouldn't have put this fence up two feet like that. Um, I probably shouldn't have, and I could still lower it or add a, like a bottom if I want to, just to keep it from coming over. I don't know why, I'm not entirely sure why I did that. Probably because I'm used to doing that from my tomato plants where I keep the fence off the ground about a foot and a half. But anyway, um, <laughs> I probably have to come back in and add something, a barrier down on the bottom to keep them out. But that's my thinking over here is to try to keep uh, these huge acorn squash plants going that way instead of coming into here. But this is part of my spicy pepper garden and I have tons of spicy peppers this year. That was my goal was to get a much bigger variety than I've had in the past because I realized that that was sort of like a hole that I had in my produce was things to do more um, more canning with to uh, grow some cayenne pepper so I could dry it and grind it. Um, and a lot of the recipes I wanted to do called for like habaneros. I didn't have habaneros. So I just wanted to have a much bigger variety um, to choose from for canning purposes. So I think I've got, see, I can't even remember, but I know I've got jalapenos and serranos and cayenne and my sugar rush uh, peppers from last year, shishito peppers, which I'm really excited about. Um, I'm blanking already. Oh, I have some, um, some lemon spice and orange spice jalapenos from Baker Creek Seeds. That was a recommendation, so that'll be fun. And I'll just have to put them in the notes because I can't remember what there is, but I have a lot of them. And not only that, I have more behind me here. So along this fence line back here, I've got more peppers. <laughs> I should do a count. I haven't, I didn't actually do a count of how many I ended up planting, but I definitely planted more than I've planted in the past. So I'll show you those with all of my tomatoes um, that I've got going that are looking really pretty. So excited. So this is the north side of my east garden. And over here I've got two or three different varieties of sunflowers all the way to here. And then on the other side of the fence, in my this is my pumpkin patch that we enclosed yesterday, which I'm so excited about. Um, on the other side of this fence, I've got um, sunflowers and cucumbers lining the whole thing that I'm gonna grow that way and cucumbers up along with the um, big pumpkins that we have growing there. But on this side of the fence, I've got the rest of my tomatoes that I didn't have room for that already look like they're needing some staking. Oh yeah, they're starting to fall over. Some Tulsi or holy basil. Um, some lemon balm, I think. Gosh, I'm gonna have to go back and watch my videos. But then all the rest of this, all the way down, um, are more of my pepper plants. Um, that again, are looking much better than the ones on my other garden. And then these are my tomato rows. And I know for sure that on this row and this row, I've got 42 plants. But then I came in and finished filling in here and I've got some random ones kind of just around the garden. I was just trying to tuck in. So I think I have, gosh, probably 50 different tomato plants in the garden, which is crazy, but really fun. And these are well up to my knee, if not above. So they're making really great headway. And we got these trellises up yesterday, as you can see, all the way down the row. This, uh, what did we measure, 26 feet? 26 feet from here to the end um, is how long these two beds are. So that's a lot of, that's a lot of plants. And these are my um, tomatillas and they look amazing as well, nice and full. And if you haven't seen my garden videos in the past, <coughs> nope, I'll show you real quick how I, how I trellis my tomatoes. There's two things, two things that I do that I feel like has really helped me have a lot of success with tomatoes and that is pruning them to one main stem instead of letting them just branch out and go crazy. So pruning them to one main stem, which I've shown in another video, and then trellising them on something like this. Now last year and the year before I used cattle panels, which is still my preferred method um, because they're really nice and sturdy but we were trying to use what we had instead of buying more materials this year. So I actually used my cattle panels for my arch trellises over there because they are gonna be really necessary for those pumpkins I'm growing. 
And then I used a two by four welded wire uh, fencing for these trellises. And they're a little shaky, which makes me kind of nervous. Um, but I can always come back in here and add support if I need to. Regardless, they're at least gonna give me something to trellis these tomatoes on. Um, and so what I do is I raise the bottom of this fence. I don't take it to the ground. I raise it about 18 inches to two feet up off the ground because tomato plants for the most part will be upright to about that height. Once they get, once they get to about two feet or taller is when they'll start trying to fall over and lay on the ground. Um, so I raise this up about two feet off the ground and then that gives me an additional two feet up there. So I'm not having to double my fencing um, for when they start growing up. And really once they get past like a foot or so past the top of that fencing. I mean, they're just kind of a mess anyway, and I sometimes just prune the top of them to keep them from growing up further. But we're not there yet in the season. We're just at this point where I'm just now starting to uh, trellis them and tie them to this fence to keep them upright. And then what I mean by um, harvesting them to, or pruning them to one stem, I've shown that in another video, but I'll show you real quick before I move on. Okay, so as you can see with this one, if I was to let this go wild, there would be all kinds of branches and stems just coming off all over this main main branch here. But what I do is I, gosh, this is hard to film. There we go. I keep this clean up to two feet. As it continues to grow, um, I continue to prune these branches to where I keep everything under this fencing just this one branch and I have found that that has helped them to be really healthy plants um, to not battle a lot of um, disease especially on these leaves that want to touch the ground if they're touching the ground and they're getting backsplash from rain or water that's what can cause them to get some of that mold and mildew on them so I as you can see have already pruned a ton of branches off this thing and I've cut out all the suckers that show up in the middle of the armpits here. Um, and so once this thing gets a little taller and you can see all this growth it's had since the last time I pruned it, then I will come in and I will cut off these branches as well. And I'll keep cutting until I get to this point. And then um, from here down will just be the main stem like this. And so see, there's just, there's some extra growth in here that's happened. These little baby branches have grown off the stem down below so I'm just gonna pull that off and this could actually become a separate tomato plant if I put it in water and let it root which I might um, and then the other thing that I do that I've talked about is I always pull out these suckers that grow in between the elbow and the I call it the armpit you've got the main branch here and then you've got sorry the main stem here and then you've got main branches that come off but right here in the elbow you'll get these little suckers that will honestly it's like another tomato plant growing off your main tomato plant and they will really make it hard in my opinion to keep your tomato plants um easy to maintain it just almost becomes overwhelming how much growth you get when you let all these branches continue to grow so see, and they grow really fast, these little suckers do. So I try to get them when they're small, but you can prune them off when they're big as well and actually make another tomato plant if you want. So see, here's one. Here's one in here. I'm not doing a very good job filming this, I'm sorry. And now you can see I have one main stem with these branches that come off. Just make sure you don't prune this little guy because this is obviously where your fruit is. But you can tell generally, especially when they're small, where the suckers are. And then you can see how I've pruned this as it continues to grow. Um, and this guy is really ready to start being trellised over here, tied to this post so that it'll grow straight up. But I have just found that to make to make tomato growing so much easier when you just keep it to that one main stem and pull out the suckers because tomato plants can go crazy um, and make it really difficult to get to the fruit, can make it really difficult to keep it clean um, and disease free. And especially you can actually grow them closer together and save space when you prune them like that because it's giving them more air in between their branches and leaves. When you pull those out, it just gives them such a better opportunity to have healthy leaves, a healthy plant, and just not feel so overwhelming. And that's really it over here 
Uh, I've got lots of flowers coming in that I planted, a lot of cosmos and zinnias and um, sweet williams. Oh, so that's fun to see those kind of coming in. I have to remind myself they're there. I almost step on them. And my rhubarb is, it's, I feel like it's slow going, but it's coming in. It's not necessarily a huge necessity for me, just more of a fun thing. All my asparagus plants came in and I feel like I did lose a fair amount of um, garlic and onions just because the weeds and the chickens took them down. But I mean, they're still, I'll still get a nice harvest. In fact, I see a scape right now. <laughs> Um, on one of my plants that's just popped up. But, you know, lesson learned. They don't do great with weeds growing around them. Um, and I did have to do come in here and do a huge, huge weeding, and there's still more growing in. So next year, I'll be able to take better care of that. But I will still get a harvest regardless, just not as much as I was originally hoping. Um, I'll show you this bed real quick, and really, I'll show you my corn and pumpkins, and we'll wrap it up. So this is the first bed that I planted this year um, with all my garlic and onions. And you can, I mean, you can just see, I, I wasn't, we did till this, but I wasn't able to lay like a silage tarp or anything down to help with these weeds. And this was just raw wild ground um, that we were battling and dealing with. So you can see, I've definitely got onions and garlic coming in all down. Just, I, I feel like I lost, I lost some, but um, this is this and I still, I'm gonna have to come back in here and still do some more weeding, which isn't fun, but that's just part of the game. And see, you can see right here, this is kind of, this is kind of what happens. They get, they've gotten trampled most likely, or just uh, these weeds have just kind of swallowed them up and they haven't really been able to do um, to be really healthy growth like these plants over here have. These here, these here are doing much better than some of these in here. Um, so that's okay. And then these are my asparagus plants that I put in. Jersey Nights was one of them and I can't remember the other, but I've got a prawn here, a prawn here, a prawn there, and then two more. So all those came in, which I'm really excited about. And those will take two, three years to really get established, but at least I have them. And then my rhubarb, where are you? Here, here. This actually, this one's looking pretty full. Uh, here and there. So, and then here's my, come up to my acorn squash, which I am trying to uh, trellis up this ladder here. Whoops, so I'm gonna have to work on this to get this guy to go where I want him to go. <laughs> they don't do what you want them to do. Uh, but anyway, he's starting to grow out, so I'm gonna hopefully get him to trellis up this ladder, at least one of his, one of his legs. Um, so really, that's it. Everything's looking really good. It's exciting. Oh, it's gonna show you my corn over here. I have several corn patches, but here is one of the original ones I planted with the rows of corn and then at the bigger pumpkin plants at the corners. And it's interesting. <laughs> there, the corn back here did really well and the corn here did not. And I honestly think that they got eaten by birds because I have found some growing in places where I didn't put it. And so I came back in and poked some extra corn kernels down that I found that I thought I had planted and didn't. And so hopefully those will come in. But if not, this will just be room for these uh, squash and pumpkin plants to just kind of sprawl here on the ground. But these uh, corn plants are looking amazing. So we will at least have some sweet corn this year, which I'm really excited about. And then these are the Jack B. Little pumpkins and the yellow trailing nasturtiums that are going to be going up over these uh, trellises right here. So I've got one here, here, and there, and then the nasturtium plants you can see right there coming in that will trail up as well. And that's it for now, my garden friends. I'm going to go pick me some summer peas, snow peas and check my turnips and decide if I'm going to harvest those two zucchinis or not. I just can't decide. <laughs> and then get on with the day. Uh, but thanks for joining me today and I will see you in a week.